Welcome back my friends and today I have another dash cam teardown for you and this time it's gonna be the Autowell V17 which actually just failed on me and look at this. <laughs> Does that look familiar? Something similar happened to my van top where it opened up because the battery internally failed and as it balloons up it forces the dash cam open. Now what's pretty interesting is that this dash cam pretty much still functions just like the band top, so I can still use it. However, as you can see, it is completely being pried apart by that battery, and at some point, it's just gonna completely fall apart open, and potentially concerning what can happen to that battery the longer I wait before I remove it from the car. Also, what's pretty interesting is just like the band top, this dash cam lasted about two years. I reviewed this dash cam back in June of 2001, but that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the industry move towards lowering the price on consumer products so people can buy them at a lower price, but the expectation for it to last from the factory is going to be lowered. We're seeing that trend particularly in cell phones where people want to have a cell phone for a year and then get the next one. So in order to bring the cost of those products down, the production has to be reduced in terms of cost, both material and also the labor. Yeah, and as you can see, there's still just enough juice to try to get this guy to turn on. <laughs> and there it is, it's working, but it's definitely on its way out. Let's crack this guy open. And as you can see, part of the work is already done for me since some of these clips have already been released, but the same clips are located on this side, so I'm gonna use my little spatula and pry this open. And we are in. And to give you an idea of what we're looking at, here is the front camera, there's a speaker right here, here's the main board, and here is the suspect battery. And as you can see, this battery is definitely spongy, almost feels like it's about to pop, so no wonder it cracked this thing open. What's also interesting is the branding. This is a different brand than what we saw on the van top. The brand top had a 500 milliamp hour, on this one, we have an 800 milliamp hour, so it looks like it doesn't matter what brand it comes from, eventually again, this is a potential source of failure. Also notice that just as before, the battery is held in place with some kind of epoxy and is soldered directly to the board, so replacing this battery will involve pulling this off and then desoldering these wires and soldering a brand new battery. And to remove the display, I'm gonna disconnect this ribbon cable, so I'm gonna start by removing this adhesive tape off. And there are two ribbon cables that connect the display to the board. Here we have this large one and this small one. It is likely that this is power and this is for data. And to release these ribbon cables, there is a little latch on the connector. By lifting that up, it releases the cable. Now these connectors are delicate, so, and same thing with the ribbon cable, that's also delicate. So releasing this has to be done carefully to avoid damaging either one. And here's where the fun begins. Some dash cams appear to be the same from the outside, so the assumption is they must be the same on the inside. And you can see that there are some similarities, and yes, sometimes dash cams do come from the same factory, but they go to two different brands who may have two different design or quality requirements. For example, take a look at the top one. This is the band top, and notice that both of the ribbon cables that are driving this display have been fully shielded using this metalized tape. You can see that here, and you can see that here. On the auto wheel, we have the both of the ribbon cables are not shielded whatsoever. And while the argument can be made that the auto wheel works just as well as the van top without all this shielding tape, and I would agree with that, you can potentially see that auto wheel save money by deleting this item because now they don't have to buy this tape, but also the labor to apply it. You can also see some stamping on the back of the displays right here, and the stamping is also represented by this little sticker right here. And if you look at the part number structure for both of them, they are very similar, the stamping indicates JXC. So if I had to guess, these things right here, I feel very strongly that each one came from the same display vendor. This one was sold to Autowell and this one was sold to Van Top, which also would explain why the part numbers are slightly close, but not quite the same. Again, we have the inclusion of that copper tape on the Van Top, but check this out. Here's a really interesting part. When you look at them from the front, the Van Top has been one of the most reflective dash cams that I have tested yet, which is great if you're gonna drive with the screen off, but if you're gonna drive with the screen on, you're gonna potentially have a lot more glare and difficulty to see that, versus the auto wheel, which still has a reflectiveness, so you can still use it as a mirror, but you can see the screen behind a little better, potentially from the same manufacturer, similar part numbers, 
very different characteristics. But now let's move over to the front camera. Let's get these things off. And here's another great example of how something can look the same from the outside but be different internally. Here is the front camera from Vanta and as you can see, yeah, it looks similar. The placement of the screws is very similar and also the outer casing. But when you look at the PCB design, they are different, including different part number nomenclatures. Now, what's also interesting is that the Vantop uses the IMX415 image processor, which is a native 4K image sensor. And if you look at the auto well, it also claims to use the IMX415. So let's open this up so we can compare those sensors together. And wow, what do you know? The sensors are actually not the same. Again, this is the Vanta, which uses the IMX415 image sensor, which is a native 4K sensor. And this one on the left side is the AutoWell D17 Pro. And you can clearly see just with the naked eye that these things are different. But let me get you a closer look at them, including how I am able to tell their differences between them. And here's a top view and side view of the sensor used by Vantop. And this is what we call a LGA package. And that is the way the component is mounted to the board. And you'll notice that the sensor sits right in the middle of a glass cover. Now that glass cover matches the description of how IMX415 is packaged according to the Sony specifications for that sensor. And also the size of the case matches the specification. This comes in as having a measurement of 12 by 9.3 millimeters. And here's a top view and side view of the sensor found in the auto well. And you can see that it looks dramatically different. And that is because this sensor is not of an LGA packaging. This is a CSP packaging, which is a smaller package. But the specification for IMX is for LGA, not for CSP. And that is also why the dimensions of this chip do not match the specification for IMX415. This barely measures 6.2 millimeters by 4.2 millimeters instead of the 12 by 9.3 millimeters that we would expect on an IMX415 sensor. But I wanted to get a closer look at it and here is the magnification of each sensor and you can see it side by side how the construction is different and I also took some measurements of the inner portion of what's active in terms of pixels and you can see that it is in fact a different measurement not only as far as the pixel area but also as far as the packaging as we saw earlier totally different sizes. But here's another often overlooked difference, and that is the lenses that a dash cam is equipped with. This is the V17 Pro front camera lens, and normally lenses are made out of several layers that could include a combination of glass and plastic, usually sometimes more glass or sometimes more plastic, depending on the cost and the quality of the lens. Here is the rear of the lens, and you can also see how there is some treads on here when this is assembled. This turns to adjust the focus and once the focus is set, there's some epoxy that is applied right there to lock it in place. But now let's take a closer look at the main board. Well, this little speaker is not gonna come out that easily. It has quite a bit of glue on here. So I'm probably just gonna destroy it if I try to separate that off the case. So I'm gonna do something I didn't really wanna do because I like to keep the whole assembly together, but I'm just gonna cut these wires, allowing me to remove the main board. First off, we have some shielding. You can see that this case right here is protecting the components underneath from potential interference from the outside or also from sending interference out from this device. Let's get this cover off. And we'll come back to this side in a minute. Let's take a look at the back. We also have some copper tape over here, again, for potential shielding purposes. And I'm gonna peel this off. Now, if you never played with copper tape before, the edges are extremely sharp. So the first time I experienced copper tape in a manufacturing floor and I wanted to touch the edge of it, I didn't realize it is sharp as a knife and it cut me uh, pretty good. <laughs> so I learned my lesson. And in addition to that copper tape, you'll notice that we also have additional shielding on the back. Let's get this guy off. Yeah, 
And just like we've seen before, this type of shielding is also sometimes used as a heat sink. You can see three thermal pads and these little pads help to conduct heat away from these three components and dissipate those into this metal casing. And starting off with the main processor, here is the CPU made by the brand All Winner and model B533. And this processes both audio and video and drives most of the dash cam. And to the right of the system on chip, we have the memory. This is made by Samsung and it's a DDR3-1600 one gigabyte of memory. Moving over to this little guy made by a company called TechPoint TP9950. This chipset is likely taking the AHD video, the analog high definition video from the rear camera and translating that into a digital format for processing. Moving over to the far right, we have AXP152 and this is a power management IC, so it's regulating the voltage and controlling power. And the last thing to note on this side is the reset button, which is accessed from the back through a hole in the case of the dash cam. But going back to the other side, let's take a look at this before we compare this to the Vantau PCVA. We have power in the form of a mini USB connector, and then we have the input for the rear camera, the memory card slot, and then we have the input for the GPS antenna. Moving over towards the bottom, you can see that there's not a lot going on here. However, of interest is this little guy made by a company called Cepheon because this is flash memory, so this is likely where the firmware is stored. Additionally, we also have the power button for the dash cam and we have the microphone. But before we compare the internals of the Vantau to the V17 Pro, I want to briefly show you the enclosure because as you can see the top one is Vantau and the bottom one is V17 and you can clearly see that even though they look similar from the outside, they are made by a different tool. Now sometimes molding houses do have both tools so they'll produce a tool for a customer but normally it's not like Vantau was going to be able to go to Autowell and say hey can I use that tool or Autowell go to Vantau and ask for that normally each customer has to pay for their own tool or use an existing tool that has been developed here clearly two different tools were made for the production of these enclosures and here we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the Vantop H612T and the Autowell V17 Pro board. And you can see that the footprint is overall about the same. And even the placement on the connectors on the top is very similar. But as you saw in the details, when you look at the actual board, the layout is different and the components being used are different. Also notice the connectors on the V17 are in a different arrangement than on Vantop. And Vantop actually has additional connectors Plus, it had this little daughter board attached to it, which I suspect is used for the voice control functionality. What's also pretty interesting is that the Vantop is actually equipped with two gigabytes of memory on one side, and moving over to the other side, we have an additional two gigabytes of memory for a total of four gigabytes of memory. However, on the V17 Pro, we only get a single one gigabyte of memory. Also, what's interesting is the all winner V533 processor or system on chip because that is quite different from the high silicone 3559 system on chip used by Vantop. This system on chip is rated as being able to handle 4K versus this one, which is only rated as being able to handle full high definition. Also different is this little chip, which is being used to convert the analog high definition signal into digital data. Vantop was using Pixel Plus, where on the V17 Pro, we found out that it is using a TechPoint chipset. But now it's time for some educated guesses. And this right here, it is likely in my experience Experience being manufactured by a different Vorhaus than this little guy right here. Notice that part number nomenclature on this side of the board, where on the other side we have a totally different part number on the bottom portion, different colors of PCVA, but Yes, it is possible some board houses manufacture for many different manufacturers and each one may have their own part number nomenclature. So it is possible that a same board house can produce two items with different part number nomenclatures. However, even when I look at the QC sticker, that label is different from the label found on this board and smaller differences lead me to believe that this is being made by two different factories. And lastly, the casing and shielding is different between the V17 and the van top. On the van top, we have a single piece of thermal tape for keeping this nice and cool. On the V17, we have additional thermal tape to keep the other elements cool as well. And in case you're wondering why some dash cams are made with a battery and some are made without a battery, well, having a battery can enable parking mode without being hardwired. So the battery in here has enough power just to capture a few incidents while the car is parked 
even though that this dash cam is not hardwired. The disadvantage of having the battery though is that it can potentially degrade like this and eventually kill the dash cam. Now, is there another option besides a battery dash cam? Well, there are dash cams that are equipped with a super capacitor or a capacitor. They use that term interchangeably. On dash cams with a super capacitor, those are rated at higher temperatures because there is no battery that can degrade. The capacitor can handle higher temperatures. However, it is important to point out that on dash cams with a super capacitor, those capacitors don't have enough power to power the dash cam when the car is parked and you're away for it for parking mode. So if you're looking for parking mode and you're looking for a dash cam that has a capacitor, it will have to be hardwired if you want to enable parking mode, which in my opinion is a small compromise Do not have to deal with this in the future. So let me know if you guys found this video helpful by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you have any more questions regarding the dash cam or the issue that I showed you, please put that in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you want to see more teardown videos and I'll make some more for you. And as always, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.